Hi folks, welcome again to another episode of My Life with Robert Burns. Jim Thompson, myself here, to talk to another of our cronies from around the Burns world. Hi Jim, how are you doing? Doing absolutely great Douglas, hi everybody. Tonight folks, our guest is the former president of Large Burns Club. Uh, so tonight I'd like you all to welcome Ray Connell. Well, <clears throat> good evening all, and uh, Douglas and uh, Jim. Um, now, where do I start? Well, although I live in Largs, I was born and brought up in Greenock, and um, you know, it's quite funny, Greenock, like uh, lots of other places, does come in for a bit of criticism, and they say it rains all the time, but that's not true, it's just most of the time, but uh, no, uh, <clears throat> and uh, I, I went to, I had a, my primary school was Lady Alice School in Greenock, followed by the Greenock High School. And I left school at, uh, when I was 16, to start work as an office boy in Scotch Shipyard in Greenock. And uh, I finished up, I uh, served my time as a, a ship's draftsman and uh, worked in the yards until, up until the well, I worked until it was, it was due to go for the National Service. So was there, was there any characters in the shipyard? Oh, characters. Car shipyard was full of characters. I mean, people say many folk work in Scotch, you see half of them. But, uh, you know, there, there was a particular carpenter and his, name was Bla his nickname was Black Tanner. And he, 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 worked, he came into work on a Monday and he never washed until Friday night. Went home Friday night handed the wife the pay into the bath and got shaved, washed, changed, had his meal, went down to the pub, had a few pints and that was it. <laughs> Monday, back into work, free through to Friday, never and either wa wa washing or shaving <laughs> and take it from me <laughs> in the summer. By God, he was right, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't the many folk volunteer to work doing the hold with him, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, uh, very good. I always remember the, 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 in the old days that when the men lined up to be paid on a Friday night and the head timekeeper and, and what have you, and there was, there, was a, there was a wee queue for platers, joiners, electricians, Plumbers, painters, red leaders, and what have you. <laughs> and this, this wage clerk, his name was Love. And he was a bit of a. I, 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 never, I never witnessed this, but I, I was told about it. And right at the very the, the head of the queue, and he was giving this guy a bit of a hard time before he gave him his wage. And he just. <laughs> And the plate have just reached through the window and got him with a tie and hauled them out and they started to sing, Oh love, not will not let me go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was, I mean, it was tough, you know, there's some... I always remember that the, I couldn't believe the, if you like, the, the workers' toilet. <laughs> It was, a, 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 it was a corrugated iron V, and it was a continual run of water. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the guys used to sit in the sun, did what they had to do, and it just get washed into the Clyde. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the apprentices used to get a bit of oily waste and light it, throw it in the water. You never saw so many asses coming up so quick in your life. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. And see if they caught the guy that did that. <laughs> it didn't mess about. <laughs> However, I enjoyed working in the shipyard. You got a lot of job satisfaction from you know seeing the finished program, finished product rather than disappearing down the launching ways and into the Clyde. But uh, the uh, after I did my national service, I got to, 
and, and I'm not going to say I, I saw the writing on the wall as far as shipbuilding was concerned because I'm not that clever. But uh, one or two things happened, you know, once, once I finished my national service, I come back in and when I thought I was going to make a set, get a certain promotion, I didn't get it. So, the, <clears throat> and uh, I decided that perhaps my career path led me somewhere else. And there was a job advertised for a layout engineer in IBM in Greenup, Spango Valley. And uh, it was what I left, that would be around about the early 70s there or thereabouts. And I worked in IBM for, with I, I was with IBM for 26, nearly 27 years. And I retired when I was coming up for my 60th, 59th, 60th birthday. And, uh, but certainly the, the IBM was, a, was an eye opener to me in, in as much as the, the shipyard, you know, a, a simple thing like they had five levels of canteen in the shipyard, whereas in IBM they had one level of cafeteria and you could be standing in the queue with the plant director in front of you and some big noise from, from uh, from America behind you and, and everything was in first name terms and and I, I, I had, I had, it took a bit it took a while for me to get used to that because the uh, when I was in the when I worked in the drawing office in Scots I was also the corresponding member for the union the AESD the Association of Engineering and Shipbuilding Draftsmen and the uh, the classic situation was when I finally decided to. So it was a great thing in the, in the shipyard, especially in the drawing office, because at that time when I finished my apprenticeship, every every yard in the Clyde was building ships. There was no problem of, of ever being out of a, out of a job, because you know the, the favourite trick was to get into the boss and say, "By the way, I'm, I've got a job up there." That, that, up the river and I'm starting a week on Tuesday and then his, his reply was well just hold on a minute I'll see if I can get you some beer money and he used to get you another <laughs> thing. It was a bit it was, it was a bit of a lever you know but <coughs> excuse me fortunately I never had to use that because when I left my boss wouldn't believe I was leaving so <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, and the classic situation was that, that that particular time, I left Scots on the Friday and all the draftsmen in the lower reaches of the Clyde went and strike on the Monday. So, <laughs> but uh, by that time I was ensconced with an IBM, which was quite an eye opener to me because the, the American way, you know, the, it was all first name terms, you know, and, and uh, Although I, I thoroughly in, enjoyed my, my job at the shipyard, because the great thing about the shipyards was the characters you met. You know, when I, there was an office boy, I was a, a, a very classic story I've told several times. I was down the yard delivering some drawings to the, the plates, plate, the platers. And I was in the, 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 the head plate, the front was in, we was in the fort, in the fort in Cocker's office, and I went in the fort and, into the office and Willie really said to me, he said, hey, son, are you passing the counting house? I said, oh, I've got to pass the counting house to get back to the office. He said, do me a favour. I said, I sure thing. What is it, Willie? He says, well, he says, I'll give you a chitty. I want to order six bars of soap because he had a wee wash basin in his office. <laughs> that was all he had right in there. <laughs> so I said, I sure thing. And I picked up his little chitty and said, six bars of soap, S-O-P-E is soap. And I said, Willie, soap, you spell soap, S-O-A-P. He says, look, son, if R-O-P is rope, S-O-P is effing soap. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it was the, 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 uh, the, I mean, the shipyard humour was second to none. However, I think it was probably in hindsight, the, the best move ever made was to get, was to get out of the shipyard and, and get into IBM because I had a, I had a wonder, I thoroughly enjoyed my work in IBM. 
towards the end, it wasn't that great, you know, and I was quite pleased that, that the, uh, after working there for 26 years, was at that time I was in there, but around about 59, nearly 60 odd years of age. And they, they, uh, they, they were starting to trim back certain levels of employees, you know, <clears throat> and they, I, and I fell into the category of the, the, the guys, if you like, they wanted to get rid, not rid of, that's probably the wrong expression to use, but uh, they, they made me an offer I just couldn't refuse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, <laughs> when I came home and told my wife, I said, look, I've made, I've made this offer and I'm going to take it. Oh, what are you going to do? What are you doing? You're, 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 you could stay in IBM for another few years and all the rest of it. I said, look. <laughs> so to cut a long story short, I'm not going through the, the in, ins and outs of that conversation for about three or four days. I must say that when they, they laid the, the, the personnel department laid the, the facts before me for, if you like, for my retirement package, it took me about 25 seconds to sign it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> However, the decision was made and that was it. And I thoroughly enjoyed my, my time in IBM. I made, made some good, I had a, some nice trips. I had a trip to America and uh, I had to go to a meeting and here was I, if you like, a wee boy from Green out in Boston addressing a, 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 a heads of departments and the, the, actually at that time they, we, we, we built what they called optical character readers and the work we were getting we had to get, we were getting the stuff was coming back to us as microwaves we had to get it printed and all, and all the rest of it and uh, I had, the quality I was getting was absolute crap so I went out to, de to, to, to defend my owner and also <laughs> And green ups. and I was so I looked at the the, the the meeting was in Boston and I looked I thought oh that's great I'm the one till 10 o'clock and there was a guy called Chuck Hay come up to me says look Ray you seem to be the guy with the main problems would you like to kick off the meeting and this was about half eight in the morning I says I'm oh, sure Chuck you know and I got him doing my presentation and had some samples and what have you and you know and he says, well, if you, if you, you know, he says, you just, you, you take us up to coffee time, which was supposed to be quarter past, half past 10. Quarter past 11, I was still on my feet, ranting and raving like a lunatic because the, 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 the guys, they, they, they didn't, they, they, they come, the club, the companies that, that I was dealing with out there, you know, they wouldn't believe, couldn't believe, you know, what I was telling them and I should have thrown their samples. Of, so the jacket came off, the tie came off, and we finished up that day, and all of a sudden the guy in front of us says, hold on a minute, he says, Green looks got a problem, and we are causing the problem. And also all of a sudden, the, the whole nature of the, of the, of the, of the, like the presentation changed. And, and, well, and all the so-and-sos that were against me to begin with came on my side. You know? <laughs> So it was, it was. It turned out quite successful anyway. And things got a wee bit better, but no, I, I did have many happy times in IBM. And when you were in Boston, did you get the opportunity to 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 be a tourist? Because it's quite a, quite well, a, oh, an interesting well, city. Yeah. Oh, I mean, this is the, the funny thing. Well, they're not the funny thing about Americans. There's nothing really funny about them. The uh, a friend, a, a, an American. You know, the likes of it at, 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 the, at lunchtime, they said, what are you doing for lunch? I said, well, I, I'm a stranger in town, right? We're going to so-and-so's for a, for a sandwich. Uh, fine, that suits me. See if they offer you the hand of friendship, take it. Because if I was to say, to you, oh, no, no, just, just leave me. I want, to, I want to go and sit in a coffee bar somewhere. That would be it. That would be me finished with them as friends, but uh, no we had lunch and then they, they said to me, look, mate, you know, where are you going for your meal tonight? I said, well, I don't know. I said, I, 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 there's plenty of places, you know, I said, but uh, he said, they said, well, they, they mentioned something out in the highway, something or other, it wasn't it highway 66? <laughs> and they, they said, there's, there's a, a, a Frank Gaffedra's 
restaurant. And we were, I said, great, you know, so super. Went out there and that was my initiation to an American steak. <laughs> well, a feed for a family of four, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm sitting in this and reading the, the brochures that were round about me, you know, in this place, you know, they, they brought in, they brought in cattle and they, they, they slaughtered them and in, 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 in the pre, on the premises. And then they went onto a, a, a chain and they went, they traveled until they were frozen. Then they kept traveling until they were thawed. And then if they left it for another 24 hours, the steak would have been ruined. And I'm just a bit nearly the end of this pun and a half a steak. <laughs> <laughs> oh Christ, what's going to happen here? But no, they, they, uh, no, they, they, they were, I, I found them, they were great people and I've, I've made many, many friends in America too. And, uh, but uh, <clears throat> of course, when they come back, you know, they, they drove me, and I wasn't the driving, but you know, they, they drove me, they stayed in this hotel. I said, well, look, if you want to come up to the room, you can, can I've got, a, that was when you're allowed to take five bottles of whiskey into America. Uh -huh. no, so, Six bottles of whiskey. I said, I'll get some. Oh, great, great. So they come up with a very good, very time with that. You know, but, but no, it was, it was a great experience. But, um, and I was at one or two other places in America. But, you know, when you go back to, to you know, you talk about your first involvement with Burns, you know, in the Greenock High School, any, the English education I got and my English teacher was Mabel Irving. You may have heard of her. She's the past president of the Mother Club. She was the first lady president of the Mother Club in Greenock. But we never got burns. I wandered lonely as a cloud and you know, that kind of stuff. And so for some reason, I, I, I picked up a wee burns book and started reading it. And I thought, oh, this, this has been, I can understand this, you know, this, because, you know, he was a man of the country and what have you. And then, and it was, I didn't really get a lot of, an, and I never get any Burns education in, this, in school at all. But uh, so, and then, you know, you wonder where does it, where does, where does, where does it come from? And, and, uh, and just what you mentioned earlier, the Tama Shanter, when I worked in Scots, uh, the, 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 uh, one of the things of, it was a, I started to I started to learn Tama Shantra. I thought, well, if I'm going to if I'm going to be interested in Burns, this is the poem for me. And I, I don't I think if if I was to recite it to Jim Thompson, I would probably get about ten marks out of a hundred. You know? <laughs> <laughs> as, far, as far as I'm concerned, Jimmy, you're the you're the expert in Tama Shantra, <laughs> among other things, of course. So oh, but, but before you, before you go on to go on to talk uh, much more about Burns, can I explore a, a wee bit more about your your time your time at school? Did you um you you went into the the shipyards? Uh, had you a particular interest in subjects that would lead you towards that? What subjects in? Uh, I mean the fact that you went into the shipyards and you you, you became um, a, a draftsman. Was was a particular subject at school that led you towards that? Were you interested in maths? No, really. or? no, because I started off as an office boy in the in the design office. That's yeah. when that where I started, and then that's when I, I get when I get when I get mixed up with the, get involved with the draftsman, and I thought, well, this looks this looks like a good job, you know. I mean, it, it was a clean job. It was a sedentary occupation, you know, and uh, so the the. the they, 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 they employed apprentices every year, you know, so and it's, you set a wee exam and then you get a, a, wee, a wee section of a ship to, to maybe down the double bottom with a couple of solid floors and wash floors and what have you. And you, you did that and, and what have and, and I was lucky enough to, to get started as an apprentice. <coughs> But uh, the, 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 the thing uh, the, in, in the, 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 a lot of the draftsmen, you know, the, they were, there was quite a, a lot of characters there as well, you know, and they, 
and, and they were always very, very helpful. Well, you knew who to go to if you had a problem, but uh, you know, and otherwise you just kept some of them you kept clear of because you're allowed to get your back. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 always, I always imagine it's the kind of job though that you'd need to be very, very neat and, uh, oh, yes. and be, be good at, be good at uh, with numbers. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know anything about that, that, no, that well, type of the, job. The thing is that it was that was the well. This was when draftsmen were draftsmen. When you know every 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 plan that you drew, you, you drew it and it was printed and it went out to the various departments for the work to be done. You know, but nowadays it's it was getting to the stage to when prior just before I left, CADAM came in and you, know, you can you know if you're if you're laying out doing a, a, a general arrangement for a ship, it's you, you have to do a, a lot of thought into it, especially when you're putting it onto you're, you're drawing onto tracer cloth, and you, and the Sometimes you, you, you just you used to do, do a lot of drawings and tracing paper, then they were taken into tracing office and all, and all the, wee, the young lady tracers, they would trace them in out for you. And I quite enjoyed getting into that wee department, you know, so. In fact, the, the, the lady who was the boss was like a lady called Grace Kerr. <laughs> she, she, she was an old spin, a spinster lady of many years standing. And every time I walked in, she said, you're only in here to chaff up the girls, aren't you, Raymond? I said, well, that'll be part of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it was, a, 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 as I say, I really enjoyed the, I mean, the, 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 there was a lot of skill in, 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 in what you did. But, you know, once the, the, the if you like, machines took over, that's when you realise that, you know, that it, uh, it was a different technology, which I would like to possibly, if I'd stayed in the shipyard, I would have been very much involved in that. Yeah. But I think the best move, I didn't realise it until a few years later, but the best move I ever made was to, to, to join IBM. Yeah, and, and get involved in making the technology instead of just using the technology. No, not so much that, the, 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 you know, when the, they, they were started to finish, they, they started to build oil rigs in Lithgow and, and Port Glasgow. They 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 were they took one on, and uh, and, and a, a draftsman who I worked with in, in Scots, a, a fellow called he's the funny I'll never forget his name, Bill Skidmore. He went out to America to look at these, to look at the thing, to, out to, to 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 Texas to see where they were built, and they. And he came back and he was absolutely gobsmacked. He said, we, uh, there's no way that we as a shipyard are going to build these things. We might build part of them, but you know, but Lithgow's did put, they managed to get a couple together, but it was a, it was a, a different technology and a, diff, and, a, and a different type of draftsmanship as opposed yep. to ship's draftsman. But and, 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 and did, uh... Did your, your job as a draftsman give you time to have, have interests outside work? Oh, yes. I, oh, I, very much, very much so. I mean, uh, 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 I, mean I, was, uh, I was in the boys' brigade. I, I came to the marvellous rank of lieutenant in the boys' brigade and, and uh, the first Greenock, you know, and, and uh, I went there as... Uh, and, and also my, mother, my mother's English. And she was a member of the Episcopal Church in Greenock. So guess who became a choir boy? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and the 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 the, sister, the, the, the head, one of the head choir boys, he was a member of the, the, the first Greenock company, the Boys Brigade. So I joined the Boys Brigade and uh, and I and I had 12 great years there, you know, and thoroughly enjoyed it. And again, the classic was uh, once uh, when I became an officer and then I used to take the Bible class on a Sunday morning, we all took terms of the Bible class on a Sunday morning. And that was at 10 o'clock. And that, but 10, 10 o'clock, and it, but, but, but after they were finished with their Bible class, we, we, the officers would have a smoke and, and go into the church service. And I'll never forget, on a Saturday night, 
course, my pals and I used to go down to Largs and, and finish up in the moorings. And the, prior to the moorings, we had a visit to the local hostel, one of the local hostelries. And we were, so <laughs> this wee boy came up to the he fella called Murray Nickel. <laughs> no, I get it. He says, Mr. Connell. I said, yes, Murray, what is it? He said, uh, my sister said you were drunk in the moorings last night. And I said, Murray, I'm an officer of the boys brigade. Why it makes what makes your sister think I was I was drunk? Oh, I know, I know you 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 would do that, Mr. Connell. I said, as a matter of fact, I've got a brother and he's very like me, and he does tend to go for this. That's who it would be, that's what it would be. <laughs> now, at that, now at that time, I was fair haired. My, my brother was black haired. And <laughs> How I got away with that wee, that wee boy, I'll never know. <laughs> Again, you know, the, 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 it was a great organisation. There's no question about it. And, you know, the, the uh, you know, the, 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 we, we actually, in our company, we had, down in the cellar, we had muskets, wooden muskets, you know, that they used, the, I never used them for drilling. But uh, what I discovered that the drilling I did in the boys' brigade was a was a great help to me when I went to my national service. You know, because all of a sudden, you know, you you go out in that square, and I, again, for the, when I was square bashing, I always remember one night there was a big fella came from up one of the the, the guys and the the the, the young air, air, airmen like myself, and he was about six foot three, six foot four. And of course, he stood out like a, like a lamp post in the middle of the street. And when he marched, he swung his left arm with his left leg and his right arm with his right leg. <laughs> and, you know, and we, the whole squad got dismissed, and poor old Scotty was out there with us drilling. Now, drill instructors were. Um, I hate to, and I'm not going to say it's a seven letter word there. You know, they, 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 their word was law. I mean, if they said jump, you never asked how high, you just did it, you know. <laughs> but, uh, and, his, and he, it was a, again a name, Corporal Valentine, he, he always like, poisoned the war, this guy. So, and in the billet, you've got a picture of the scene, there's 24 in a billet, 12 beds up each side. Now Scotty looked at Scotty was out in that, and he and he was actually he was actually crying because and, and you no, know, he eventually mastered it, but we had a hell of a job. So, <laughs> now when you go back after you had your tea at night, you know, in the building, you did be bulled up for the for parade the following morning. Now at the end of the billet, there was a wee room, and that was where the corporal. Your drill corporal sometimes stayed there. So, big mouth. And I'm saying, he was polishing away. And then I, I, I said, when I, what Valentine was saying to Big Scotty out in the parade ground, and there was a hush, there was a silence. And this voice said, who is using my name without using my rank? <laughs> so I stepped forward, I said, it was, that was me, me, Corporal, and your name is, and that was one thing you tried not to tell them your name, because <laughs> the first thing they get, you, can you play the piano, or when you shift, when you shift, <laughs> play piano in the naffy, something like that, you know, and, I, and I told him, he says, right, Connell, this was not Friday, and uh, they said, uh, this, on, now the only night we get out of, out of uh, the square car, the but square bashing was a Saturday night. You didn't have enough money to go anywhere to, any other night anyway. So, and he said, "Would you, you, you on, on Saturday after parade, you will report to the cookhouse, and you will report to the cookhouse on Sunday morning, and you will work with the cooks, and they'll give you all the good jobs to do." You know, and I thought, "Oh God, what can you do?" So on Saturday morning, we were all, we have just come, we have been parading and been here, there and everywhere. And, uh, and then there was 112 people, guys in this flight, same as myself, 
AC2 plonks. And we Valentine, Corporal Valentine was taking a parade and I thought, I said, Corporal Valentine, permission to speak? Yes, Connell, what is it? And I said, I wish to apologize for using your name without using your rank. He said, apology accepted, forget my punishment. And I thought, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you, you want a coconut there? These guys, these guys thought they were God. <laughs> But, uh, it's horrendous. Uh, Ray, Ray you, we, you started getting us on to talking a wee bit about Burns earlier on. So let, let's get, get into that in more detail. And I'll ask Jim to talk to you a bit about your, your life with Robert Burns. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, knowing you quite well, there's a few questions that, that um, are out of the ordinary. And you've already described how you get into Burns. How did you get started with Lars Cronies? Well, the, you know, the, the, in, in, I've always had a, a, a great belief in, 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 in life, Jim, that, uh, for example, if you're involved in an organisation or an association and you get pleasure from it, you should be prepared to put something back into it. For example, when I joined the golf club, I, I got, you know, I had, I loved my golf career for what it was worth, but, you know, I finished up, you know, then, you know, the, 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 the I finished up, the, I, I did committee, I became golf club captain, and after that was finished, I took over as secretary, you know, and I did, uh, sometimes at Rutenburn, I get, I get called Mr. Rutenburn, which I'm, you know, which I'm quite proud of, you know, but, until they start asking me questions that happened about 60 years ago, then that becomes a problem. And then and when I joined the uh, when I joined the cronies, the, the Burns Club, again, you know, that was uh, that's a, but over 20 years ago since I joined it. But when I became and eventually I went I got on to I went on to the committee and and I became president. And, uh, but as I say, you know, and I think, you know, in, if a, a lot of people, you know, when I was, especially in the golf, on a Saturday morning, I'd be working. I did a lot, I had to work a lot of overtime in IBM with a particular job I was doing. So on a Saturday morning, I finished work at 12 o'clock, diving down the road, into the house, hello, pet, cheerio, I'm away, and, you know, because my wife expected that, you know, to carry you to the golf club quick enough, hail, rain or snow, you were out there, as daft as a brush. But, uh, you know, you're, you're getting changed and you're, you're tea off time, your mates are up in the first tea and this. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Carlton, could I have a word? <laughs> you know, when you stand in the first tea, I've got as much chance of hitting that golf ball as I think as a pack in biscuits, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> and it really throws you, and eventually, and you thought, I'm captain of the club, I've got to speak to this wee guy, and he explains his problem. I said, look, by the way, I said, all you have to do is put it in writing and put it into the committee and you'll get an answer. It might not be the answer you're looking for, but, you know, you'll get an answer. So, uh, and, he, and I said another thing, have you ever thought in going forward for the committee? Oh, I'm not a committee man. I'm telling you, if you can do it, I said, well, if you don't put it in the letter, you know. So that's, the, that's me. I've, I've always, and then when, um, when I became president of the, the Lars Cronies Burn Sub in 2010, I think it was, the, uh, and uh, we used to, the committee meetings were, the late Fairly McGill was secretary at the time. And Fairly, it was, we had a meeting once a month and they'd read out the, the correspondence. Ah, there's a quarterly meeting in Federation doing the Dean Castle on Saturday. I can't go, you know, and Joe McGin Joe McGinty was, was, was the vice president at the time. Joe and I were president, the vice president, well, 
I think everybody that knows us would finish up, you would know the relationship we had and we enjoyed for so many years. So I said to Joe, you know, our problem in Lags is we're a bit parochial. And uh, the, you know, at, at that time we did, it was the schools competitions. We did five primary schools. And you know, and it was around judging these children. It was, it was, it, it was an education to me, and that was all part of the enjoyment. And uh, so, and I said to Joe, "Look, let's go down to Dean Castle. Let's a quarterly meet with the Robert Burns World Federation." And we've never. Just maybe it's time we spread our wings. So Joe and I appeared at Dean Castle, and. I'll never, ever forget that first morning. The only person we knew there was John Skilling. And, you know, and Margaret, could, Mar I can't remember Margaret's second name. She was the secretary at that time. And we're all, everybody was oh, they're very nice. They were coming from the south of England, east of Scotland, west of Scotland, north of Scotland. And I'm looking at Joe and he's looking at me, you know, and I said, what do we do? And I said to, and, uh, I said to John, I, John, I said, Joe, John, I said, we have new boys in the boat. What do we do? He says, well, they, they said, Margaret will be out in a wee while and she'll tell every committee where they're to go to have their meeting. And then the, the chairman or pe chairperson of that particular meeting, he does a wee minute of it and then presents it to the, the, the foregathered company after lunch. And I thought, I will. Okay, schools, that's for us, you see. <laughs> and you know at that time in schools when when we went round the, the various the, the all all the, the schools every, every the, the five schools Skelmerley, St Mary's, Fairley, and you know there was five five Kelburn and my daughter was in the secretary in the other and the other one. The, the, the last cronies gave the, 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 each school £50. And that was to purchase Scottish literature and, 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 and anything by, about Robert Burns. So over the years, you know, we, we have presented a lot of money to the various schools and, it's, and it has helped. But however, go back to Dean Castle and, and uh, Margaret came out and read, it was the heritage, there was the schools, conference and what have you. And I said to Joe, right, we'll go to the schools and see what's what. And with all due respect, I don't really mean any money, anyone any harm here, but when I saw who was all going into the schools competition, I thought, oh, hold on a minute. You know, the, you know at, that, at that time, Joe and I had started to spread the rings a wee bit and we actually went to a club night in uh, Wellwood with the Irvine Lassies. And maybe, maybe I'm, I was wrong, maybe it was too touchy, but I got a feeling, oh, here they come, these people from Largs, you know, <laughs> they, think, they think they're millionaires or something like that. And we had a bit of a, a wee bit of a, a problem sort of make them realise that we're just Jock Thompson's bairns. However, I said to Joe, no, the schools, it's, it, 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 was, it, was, it was the biggest, it was the biggest committee for a start. I said, well, the way, conference is at Atlanta this year, next year. Mum will go to the Gunty conference. So up we went into the bureau in conference. The, Marianne Dunsmore, she was a chairperson, Harry McGuffard, Jim Robertson, uh, Jim, oh God, the pal from Presswick. And uh, we just went in and sat in at the meeting and introduced ourselves, you know, and they uh, explained it was that there was their first, our first meeting, what have you. <laughs> the next thing. We've discovered that we were both elected onto the conference committee. <laughs> no, one, no one proposes. No one. I think we've got. I think we've got the job for good attendance. To be quite honest, <laughs> and I have never, I have never regretted that move in my life. 
that's when we discovered what Burns was all about and how little, how little we knew. We, we learned that over the years, you know, but at the same time, you know, the, the guys that you met, you know, uh, Phil Todd, how, you know, Phil Todd and Willie Morris and, and Jim, Jim yourself, Jim, and it was, you know, you, you, you listen to these guys and all of a sudden you think to yourself, I know the square root of five times nothing about Burns compared with them. And by the time, lucky enough, to, we had Phil Todd at a Crony's Burns Supper one night and it was, Phil spoke for about 45 to 50 minutes and, you know, it was obvious that, you know, he had the audience in in his hands, and you know, he was such a, a wonderful man. But uh, no, I was, uh, the, the, and everyone who attended that burnt supper, some people still talk about it. You know, Phil's immortal memory, 45, 50 minutes, never a note, nothing. And he just appeared there in the, in the bar, <laughs> and he, and you know he had, he had quite a sense of humour too. You know, he, and we were, we were sitting. He, he was on a wee glass of sherry before we started, and uh, we chatting to him and, and what have you. And he, he said, you know, he says in this job you meet some characters and some funny. He says, you know, I was at a burn supper. I do, I, I do it a while ago. He says, and this guy came up to me and said, oh, by the way, he Phil, he says, I've got Robert Burns' pipe, and Phil says, have you, son? And how do you how 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 do you make that out, son? Well, he says Burns and his father used to sit in the old clay biggin at night with a peat fire with a pipe going. And Phil says, "Is that a fact?" You realise, of course, he left Alibi when he was seven years of age. As a matter of fact, it just proves one thing: you're just as daft as you look. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and. You know, the, the, the man and Willie Morris and oh, for heaven's sake, you know, I, I remember being at Dorai, I think it was Dorai, Burns Club, and uh, Willie was up and he said a few words, you know, he, he, he gave one of you reading, and then he, the, the, there was supposed to be some uh, some people coming with guitars and what have you to. Uh, Entertain the company, they couldn't make it. So Willie sang a song. <laughs> and he says, If you like, I'll do a wee dance for you. <laughs> you know, but these were these once you get in with those people and you just realize that, the, in fact, we were finished listening to, to Phil and, 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 Joe, and the late Joe Kennedy. Uh, 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 a master Burns in if there ever was one, you know, a tremendous regard for Joe. And, uh, you know, the, you, you, when you listen to these guys talking, you, you think they run away, run mates with Burns, you know, so <laughs> that was <laughs> the impression they gave. So, but that was, that was how I got involved with the Federation. And uh, I have never, uh, probably never regretted one minute of it because, you know, the, again, it was, it was what Burns was all about, and you know, what the Burns movement was all about, you know. And and the uh, the uh, no, but unfortunately, well, this year I can't go to. I, I'm not. I can't make the conference this year because my wife hasn't been all that well. She had a stroke a week a while ago, but uh, and also it clashes uh, uh, again. It's another uh, uh, again. It's through golf. Um, uh, and the executive committee of the Associated Clubs of Clyde. And this is an inter, the oldest inter-club golf competition in the world. And we're due to celebrate our 125th anniversary in 2023. And, uh, you know, the, so, but the whole thing is, it's, they, they change the day. We run two competitions a year. We have a big trophy on the first Saturday in June and a wee trophy on the first Saturday in September. 
and unfortunately the, that clashes with the, with the conference this year a bit and didn't and it clashed with the conference last year as well well the class year was, last year the conference was cancelled but uh, no, it's, it's, and, and that was that, that's how I started in in in, in Burns, you know, and and I did, I did get, I, I did start to read about the, the man, and you know, and what have you, and, and I have done him, I have done an immortal memory quite a few, but I actually, I I, I don't, you know, people uh, people say to me, you know. Why you know what, what, why why are you so interested in Burns? I said because you know once you get in, in, involved and in, in read some of the, it's unfortunately I've never read a lot of his letters but I would like to maybe take time to do that get that one day but uh, his points points were they were second to none and uh, the, uh, the the I mean, I've done immortal memories I've done the tours the lasses of, and I get invited. I've been invited to various golf clubs to do tours of the clubs, and and uh, what have you. You know, I mean, I'm, but uh, I, I always re I realised that you know, as far as like, getting, getting getting into Burns in depth, you know, you, you've got to be very very careful. You know, the, the first bun the, the first bun supper I think I attended was a golf club one. And that nearly put me off golf. He burns for life. The guy that did the mortal memory was actually a, a past carpenter out in Burn. He was a school teacher, and he gave us a chronological burns, a, a chronological immortal memory. And I always remember Joe Joe uh, McGinty at uh, down at the uh, Salcoats Salcoats or Ardrossan Ardrossan Labour Club. And Jack McConnell was speaking at it, and Joe was singing at it, and went into the toilet for it. Jack McConnell said to Joe, "What do you think of that, Joe?" And Joe says, "No, very much." And Jack McConnell says, "Maybe it's just as Willie died at thirty-seven, you know." <laughs> but the, the, the story is, you know, again, you know, the, I mean, even you know, you, you, the, the conference is. I loved, I, 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 I loved every minute of the conference. The conference was great. And I can remember you were involved in it, Jim, uh, at the uh, people. Just to interrupt you, Raymond. Right. Was, You're the only man I know that's, hmm? that, that's travelled 3,600 miles to go for a wee do at a conference. <laughs> go for Lars to Winnipeg. You and Joe. You and Joe. He was something different. I was speaking to his wife this morning, actually. The uh, no, uh, there was the one that we were sitting at lunchtime, and I think it was on a Saturday. I can't remember. And Len Murray was with us, and Len Murray and you started giving us tales from the Glasgow Police Courts. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was nearly greeting with a laugh, and, and I thought to myself, and I said to Len Murray later, I said, "You know, Len, I think you were trying the wrong people." You know? <laughs> <laughs> One of the things you said there, Raymond, was about the, the enjoyment of the Burns movement. And I think you've got it 100% correct. And, and when you think about it, how lucky you've been to be in the company of uh, uh, Joe McGinty, Joe Kennedy, Wally Morrison, and Phil Todd all at the one time. Because any time I've been in that company, I sat like a wee boy in the corner and just absorbed <laughs> everything. It, it, it was just amazing. And Jimmy Gibson as well, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy Gibson, and Jimmy's, and Jimmy's still way up to the floor. Yeah. You know, he's been going for this year as well. But, you know, it's, it, it's you know, okay. And then, you know, and then I, I started to, to, to do, learn of, I, I did, I can get, I can, <laughs> as I use, I can flounder my way through the the Tamashanta. but but there's a there's a wee there's a wee poem I do uh, not a wee poem it's a tribute to Robert Aiken and uh, I quite liked it because once you once you read the, 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 the read about Robert Aiken in fact when we were down at the Reith Lane down at the uh, Kirk 
not that long ago, Angus was with us and we were looking for a Robert Aiken's grave in the, in the graveyard behind off the high street. But uh, there was, it, was, it was all roped off for some reason, you know. That's my kind of party piece as a, as a, as a tribute to Robert Aiken. Is that a party piece you could maybe manage for us just now? Aye, well, if, if, <laughs> if I stumble, don't be surprised. No, 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 that's okay, don't mind if you stumble, that's okay. But, I, mean, I mean, Robert Aiken was a, was a great supporter of Robert Burns. And, you know, it was said that uh, Robert, uh, Robert Burns didn't realise he was such a good poet until he heard, till Robert Aiken gave, read some of his stuff back to him. And Burns had such a high regard for Robert Aiken that he dedicated a quarter Saturday night to him. And it's reckoned that uh, his Robert Aiken's son, John Hunter Aiken, was the subject for an epistle to a young friend. And when the, the, the uh, Burns poetry was the, the, the poet, his poems were being were being printed. Robert Aiken got him about 125 subscribers, which was really 25% of the people who actually purchased who who, 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 who the, 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 25% of the printed run. So <clears throat> and, uh, I'll, I'll do my best, as I say. Assist me while I sing the virtues of a crony, and with the pleasures friendships bring can scarce be shared by money. Who is this man such land to gain? Let there be no mistaken, as if there could be mere than yin. Step for it, Robert Aiken. When I had neither pound nor plight to, and our name to, to rub together, and hopes her eyes and seem so black as midnight were together, when chased and challenged by the law, my very heart was quaking, who stood my stead, my fear for all, oh ho, but Robert Aiken. When he and she, both young and old, were bent in my undoing, and tried the lies and scandals bold to drive me into ruin, he never once withdrew his smile or listened to their creaking. There's the man that's worth the while, a dark man like Robert Aiken. And when I took my trusty pen to try a bit of rhyming, he introduced me button Ben to set me on my climbing. I advertised my name abroad, a minstrel in the making, and fairly read me into, into fame, but, Rob, but lawyer Robert Aiken. And when my muckle quam, quam was a thought on to him my poems printed, many friends the copies bought, and some of them were stinted, who by the dozen and the score, their names they kept me raking. The king of all the buying core was surely Robert Aiken. The day will come when I'll be deemed a poet grander, greater, who never prophesied or dreamed the loudest, proudest praetor. So let this fact be published now, that at the poet's awaken, the truest, kindest friend he knew was honest Robert Aiken. And that was it. I don't, that's not, 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 not bad at all, not bad at all. We didn't need a, we didn't need a retake. But as I say, the, the, uh, again, you know, man, in life, if you get pleasure from something, you should be prepared to put some time back into it. Mm -hmm. and, and uh, I've been, I can assure you that she who walks in water hasn't been very happy with me sometimes. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, 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 need to give her, you need to give her a mention by name. <laughs> My wife, Betty. Yeah. We've, been for, we've been married for 62 years, you know. So. My goodness. The only, only, only somebody says, it only seems like yesterday, but even the way it was yesterday, I kind of say a bloody awful day it was. <laughs> <laughs> and and, so, and you, met, you mentioned uh, one of your grandchildren helping you get the, getting the, the well, Zoom I, connected. I, I, have, I have two grandchildren, and if you can see that. Oh, there you go. That's my bonnie lasses. The, uh, no, the, 
One, the, the, the oldest one, Claire, she lives in Aberdeen. She, she was she's a radiographer up and she was a radio, well, she is a radiographer, but at the moment she is a, when he present me with a, make me into a great grandfather come September. So. Oh, well done. Congratulations. <laughs> And, and Katie, she works with she works with a company in in Kilmarnock. Is it Campbell's? Uh, she, she worked with Taff for a while, and uh, she likes to go about firms and fair farmers and what have you, you know. So <laughs> and, very uh, good. And her boyfriend, her boyfriend, he's a farmer, farmer up the road there, and him and his pals went to Rossi <laughs> Rossi <laughs> Agricultural Show. <laughs> And come back with COVID. So, <laughs> so we see what you feel. We see that a man's went into isolation for a while. <laughs> uh, you were staying out of his road. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's uh, I mean, life is sad. I don't know. It's, I, I've had a lot. I've had a lot of fun. And, and you know, the, the, to me, the great thing is, as I've mentioned, the people met a lot of good, met a lot of good people. A lot of yeah. good people. Well, well, I I reckon that you you, you have got one accolade with you, with your club, because you must from um, from where you hold the, uh, the the meetings, you must have the best view in the world. Oh yes, it's true, Douglas. <laughs> and actually, that that view is going to get better. You know, I remember that you come up and you and you'd bought a fish supper. You know, you were lucky the seagulls and never attacked you. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, you know, and it does, I mean, that's the great thing about, I mean, golfing at Rutenburn, as a golfer at Rutenburn, you know, if the golf's rotten, which it was occasionally, the views are magnificent. I mean, when you stand on the, the ninth medal tee, you can see Ben Lomond, you know, and to me, the, 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 the and then as you come down the Clyde, you've got the Gargoyle Peninsula and, and what have you. My favourite, my favourite view at Rutenburn is uh, it's, it's at, the, at the 14th hole. And you, you drive and you, you go over, you, you go up a hill. It is quite a hilly course. Over a hill and then you drop down into the, towards the green. But once you get to the top of that hill, what a view you've got. You've got virtually from Ailsa Craig to Arne, Butte, Argyle, the Argyle Peninsula, and it really is. And it's it's quite funny. I mean, uh, and during my, shall we say, my stay in office, um, I've scattered the ashes of one or two people in Rutenburn, you know. And there was one particular guy, a fellow called um, Stuart Malcolm, Stuart had an unfortunate accident coming from Friday night, coming, driving from Largs after had a few babies. He finished up in the show and was killed. And uh, he uh, and his brother said to me, any chance of getting his ashes scattered? I said, I, 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 I know I wasn't sure what the legal situation was. But I said, well, what, what, what we'll do is, he said, oh, he had this. And he described the view that I've just described to you. And from the 14th, it says it's absolutely so panoramic, it's absolutely on a beautiful day. So he uh, put his scattered his one, and then I, we took it up. There was a howling gale, and I think I think he blew out of bounds that night, but I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, I'm, 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 I'm sure he would appreciate the humor in that. Well, I mean, I think to me, and each every tragedy, there's humour, you know. Yeah. But you just got to be careful how you express it sometimes. <laughs> I mean, well, Ray, what 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 kind of uh, run out of time? We get back on the golf and the view from Rutenburn and Largs at the end there. But really, I just want to thank you for telling us about your life with Robert Burns. Thank you very much. <laughs>